Matthew Simmons is joining us now from Orinda. It's good to talk with you today. So first, how does it feel to have your first guide dog? Um, I really like having a guide dog. Um, there's kind of like the whole companion thing. Like, I mean, a guide dog is more of a companion than like a white cane. Um, and then also traveling just is a lot less stressful with the dog. I'm able to like maneuver around obstacles easier. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's just, it's nice always having a friend there when you're stressed out traveling, but yeah. <laughs> sure, exactly. I mean, it's not, you know, what, what does it take to get a guide dog? So to get a guide dog, um, there's a lot of uh, training with your white cane before. Um, the guide dog schools typically want to make sure that you're proficient with your orientation and mobile, mobility skills so that if the dog isn't able to work um, or to guide you, then you're able to get around on your own. Um, so, I mean, for me, I probably trained with the cane for about three years, um, like multiple times a week with my orientation and mobility instructor in high school. Um, and then I went to I went to um, a couple of guide dog programs, um, one in San Francisco and then one um, at the School for the Blind in Fremont, California. Wow, so training for that for three years, that's a long time and a commitment. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, it's, I mean, like I kind of started out with no mobility skills because um, at that, when I decided I want a guide dog, I was uh, around like a freshman in high school and by that point I had lost pretty much all of my remaining vision um, so like learning how to use the cane for all of um, like all of navigation took about yeah like three years in total and, I mean it's still like a constant process learning but yeah well this is exciting you graduated from high school and now you have college plans they're big college plans too where are you headed um, I'm going to Gonzaga University up in Spokane, Washington, and um, I'll be there in the fall, planning on studying uh, business administration and finance. That sounds great. Are you excited? I'm very excited, yeah. And yeah, this year um, to defer particularly was good, uh, like COVID and everything. Um, and I'm excited to be like in person in the fall. Yeah, that'll be great. So you actually attended the Guide Dog for the Blind summer camp. Tell us about that experience. Yeah, so that was a really good experience. Um, we were able to uh, do training with the dogs, but before that, we trained with this thing called Juno, and it simulates having or being guided by a guide dog. So you typically your mobility instructor would hold one end of it. Um, it's like a square. Uh, there's like two handles on either end and then they pretend to be a guide dog and then you work on all the footwork for the commands um, You work on like telling them where to find things and learning like what it is traveling with a guide dog um, Because traveling with a guide dog is completely different than a cane um, Explain you're being that pulled. difference Yeah, so with the cane um, it's kind of like you're using different senses. You're, you're with the cane. You're using um, more of like feeling in front of you. You're feeling um, like different obstacles and different textures on the ground. But with a guide dog, you you, um, you lose all that pretty much. Um, but you trade that for efficiency uh, because the dog is able to navigate around those things. Um, and then you're being pulled. And instead of you you finding things with your cane, you teach the dog how to find things, and you and you teach them specific routes, which is pretty cool. And definitely speeds up the process and you <laughs> run into less things for sure. I mean, you definitely have to have a lot of trust in your guide dog. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, when you get the guide dog, it's not, I mean, like you're constantly training him, like, you know, they're dogs, they're not like robots. Um, so, I mean, they're, they're gonna mess up and then you just correct them and, and you teach them new routes. Like if you move or something, if you wanna, go to the grocery store, you teach them a route to the grocery store. Um, or if you want to teach them, like I taught Cranby to find buttons at intersections um, and you can find chairs and doors and elevators and stairs and escalators and all that kind of stuff, which speeds wow. things up. Well, you've had experience with this. You actually had a canine buddy when you were little. Tell us about that. 
Yeah, so Guide Dogs for the Blind does uh, a canine buddy program because not all of the guide dogs make it through to become a guide dog. So then um, they put some of those failed guide dogs in a program called the Canine Buddy Program, which is when, um, like, a young kid, I was around 11, um, thinks that they might want to get a guide dog later in life. Um, and you're given, like, a fully trained dog um, that was just failed to be a guide dog. So they like, have all the obedience commands. And I mean, I took responsibility for feeding, watering, and like walking the dog. Um, and yeah, and like a lot of the obedience commands transfer over to uh, the commands that the guide dog comes with. And it was, I mean, it was a great experience to learn um, how, how to have a dog because I'd never had a dog before then. Um, yeah, yeah. So your guide funny. dog's name is Gramby? Yeah, Gramby. Okay, what kind of breed? He's a mix between a lab and a golden retriever. All right.